The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. From there he set out and went away from the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast a demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child laying on the bed and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephaphtha, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You be seated, let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for allowing us to gather as your people to worship you. We ask that in this time, in this place, as we meditate on your word, that you guard our hearts and our minds from distraction, and that you open our ears and our eyes and our thoughts and our hearts to what you are up to in, through, and around us. In your name we pray, amen. This morning, we have a little bit of a tough verse. There's a lot of good that happens in it, but it's really one that makes us think, really, Jesus? Did you really just call that woman a dog? Did you really just say that? It's one that, that makes you wonder, what is the point of that? What is the good in that? Where, where, why? Why would you call somebody that? But in order to understand these verses, I think it's important to think about it in the full context, to think about it first with the rest of chapter 7, which Pastor Diane had preached on last week. And I'm going to give you the Pastor Josh Cliff Note, Cliff Note version of that. Um, so if we remember, there's some people that came to Jesus, the disciples weren't washing their hands like they were supposed to, and... and they're like, Jesus, they're not washing their hands. Why are they not washing their hands? It's tradition, they're supposed to wash their hands. They need to wash their hands, Jesus. And Jesus told them, well, you know what? We don't do things for tradition's sake. We do things because God told us to. So if we're doing it for tradition's sake, we need to not just do it for tradition's sake. We need to do it because God told us. And then he went in to talk about what defiles us, right? That it's not what comes into us defile, that defiles us. Instead, it what, it's what comes out of us that defiles us. So as we think about this text, as we think about this woman who isn't a Jew, she isn't somebody who was a follower of Jesus. She's somebody that heard about Jesus, somebody that had a little bit of hope for her daughter. It's kind of like that little boy that we heard about all those weeks ago who, who had heard about what Jesus could do. He had heard about what Jesus could do, right? He had heard that Jesus could do mir miraculous things. So that little boy was foolish enough to come to Jesus with, with a few loaves of bread and some fish and say, hey, Jesus, you know what? I know that this might not be able to feed any, everybody, but you know what? Here you go. Here's what I have to offer. And likewise, this woman had heard about Jesus. She heard about what he could do, and she thinks, you know what, this might be the guy. This might be the guy that could finally help me. 
And I don't know about you guys as parents or as, as having somebody with little children or someone that you care about, but when they're sick, you're willing to go to whatever it takes to be able to find a cure, to want to help them, right? You would go to the end of the earth to try to figure out what's wrong, to try to help. And that's what this woman had probably been doing. She'd probably been going to doctor, to doctor, to doctor, trying this, trying that, doing everything she can to try to help her daughter. She's like, I heard about this guy. I'm going to go see him. I'm going to go see if he can help me. And now she has this hope. She has this hope that's in her that she's going to go see this man and he is going to be able to heal her daughter. But when she gets there, when she asks him, when she asks him, begs him to cast a demon out of her daughter, his response is, let the children be fed first. For it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's enough to break someone's spirit. Remember those words that Jesus talked about? about it's not what comes into us that defiles us, but it's what comes out. This woman is an example of that. This woman in her quest to be able to heal her daughter, this, this noble quest of wanting to do something, wanting to help her child. The response is, this isn't for you. This isn't for the dogs. This is for these people. Shoo. That's what came into her. But what came out of her was something else. Jesus, even the dogs get to eat the crumbs from under the table. This woman's faith was enough that she was able to hold on, that it wasn't, it wasn't a whole loaf of bread that she needed. It wasn't something big that she needed. But it crumbs would be enough. Do you remember when I had a talk all that time about that bread of life? A little bit ago this summer? Those weeks of bread of life? This woman believed in this bread. This woman believed that there was life. And she believed that she didn't need a lot of it. She just needed a little bit for her daughter to have life. And she said, you know what? Maybe I am a dog. Maybe I'm not somebody who this is for. But I know that it can still help me. I know that it can still do something for me. Church, how often is our response that to our response like Jesus is when we have somebody that's different than us come into these doors. Somebody that may not fully understand the way we do things. Somebody that may be mixing their cultural faith with their spiritual faith. Somebody that may hold cultural practices different than us. And they bring them in here to worship. Somebody who may not understand our liturgy, who may just pop up and say, hey, I gotta go now, but it's okay. Have a good day. Thank you for have, letting me be here. Sometimes there's these little things that we can let other people have, these crumbs of the bread of life that are able to feed them. But it's uncomfortable for us. Much like it would be uncomfortable if you were at somebody's house and their dogs were under the table licking for crumbs under your feet, right? That could be uncomfortable. I know that one of my foreign exchange students right now, um, Volnet, he's from Kosovo, and he has not had dogs in the house. So my little basset hound drives him crazy. And she's just so sweet and slobbery, but he's like, judge, she's sick because she's slobbery. And I'm like, no, 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 that's just a normal dog. But that's uncomfortable for him, right? And sometimes those things are uncomfortable to us. Sometimes dogs are uncomfortable to be like under the table or at our feet or things like that. But to think about that image, to think about the fact that we in church, there's some people that we think aren't worthy or aren't, because they're different than us or not the same, that they don't belong here too. Or because their practice is different. It can even go into first service, second service sometimes, right? That, that 
there's just differences in the worship style and, and sometimes we think, oh, one's better than the other, but they're not. It's just each of us being able to have the crumbs that we need to be fed, to receive the bread of life, to worship God, to be in relationship with God. So how do we open ourselves to be okay with somebody else getting the crumbs the way that they need? Because this woman, she shouldn't have been talking to Jesus. This woman, she shouldn't have been out there chasing after him. This woman's response shouldn't have been what it was. It should have been, she should have just turned around and walked away. But she didn't accept the status quo. She was ready for some change to happen. She was ready for something new. She was ready to be a part of what Jesus had. And this is a sign to us that Jesus' ministry isn't just for us. It is for everyone. It is for those that look different than us. It is those that believe differently than us. It is for all of us. And how are we going to welcome others so that they can have their share of the bread of life? So that they can experience God the way that we get to experience God? How are we going to be inviting? How are we going to be welcoming? How are we going to sit in the uncomfortable situations when somebody does something that's not a typical Lutheran way in this space? Are we going to be open to it? Let it change us? Let it make us new? Let it enrich our faith? Or are we going to be uncomfortable and push it away and say, no, this isn't for you. There's somewhere else that'll be for you. Today we're being told this should be a place for that. This should be a place that's open. This should be a place that's loving and caring. This should be a place rather than having somebody under the table that builds a longer table and sets another's place, sets another setting, and allows somebody else to come into what we have to experience the bread of life. Amen.